Two days after Leica introduced the new Leica M10R, I had the privilege to go out and shoot with that new camera. And the camera was given to me by the Leica store in Zurich and they left it with me for 1.5 days during their closing hours. And I made a video which I posted a week ago, so you'll find the link down in the info box below this video and uh, check it out if you're interested in that rangefinder because I show also lots of sample images and share my first impressions on that new Leica M series camera. Now here, this Leica M10R is my own camera. I just bought it this week and uh, I should say I'm already in love with it. It's a fantastic rangefinder camera. It's the best rangefinder camera on the planet, believe me. And it's a pleasure going out and shooting with that camera. What you see here is the Leica M10P. And this is a special edition. It's the so-called Safari edition in olive green. And uh, like I used from time to time to produce a certain M series camera in olive green for the German military. That's basically the roots of this tradition. Why the lens looks a little bit exotic on it is because for the time being in olive green, you get only the 50 millimeter. There's a 28 millimeter and another one announced, but is not yet available in the market. And this one here is from another special edition of a camera M10P, which I own and I wanted to have the same lens on both bodies here. So this is the 35 millimeter Summicron lens with widest open aperture of f2.0. And I mounted them on both cameras. And uh, the purpose of this video is to show a couple of images where I did a shooting with both cameras of the same scene. I will put the two images side by side in Capture One. We'll look into it and see what the differences are and what we can discover. Let's start with the video. Now, having the M10P and the M10R side by side, there are only two major differences on these two cameras. And the first one is the obvious one, is the new sensor. So the Leica M10P has the classical M series 24 megapixel sensor. It's a full frame sensor. So it's 36 times 24 millimeter film roll type format. And here you have the same format, full frame sensor, but you have 40 megapixels, or I should say a little more than 40 megapixels, but let's call it 40 megapixels for the time being. And there is a second difference here, and that's the way how long you can take exposures given certain ISO values. And uh, let's have a quick look into that now. And let's switch on the Leica M10P to see what I'm talking about. So here we go. And uh, there is one setting here on the exposure dial, which is called B. And typically B is bulb mode. On the Leica M10P and the Leica M10R, you can program that bulb mode. So here you're at eight seconds. If you look here on the camera display, you have eight seconds. And then let's go one more ahead and then you have B. And there is one button here, which I called the most important button in my last video on the M10R. If you press and hold that button, let's do this you get an exposure setting sub menu. And now you can scroll here and you can go up to, you know, four minutes here on an ISO of 100. I think in my last video, I mentioned two minutes. So I was mistaken. You can go up to four minutes. And now how do you program this? Let's say I want to go to 90 seconds. So I agree to that. And now if I change my exposure dial again, I can actually go to whatever I want one over 500 of a second. But if I go back to B, here you go, then it's programmed to be 90 seconds because that was my choice before. Now, if we push the button again and change it, let's say to four minutes, and uh, we are somehow here randomly on the uh, exposure dial and I go back to B, it's stored at four minutes. So in this way you can program what exposure time is associated with the B setting on the exposure dial. That's a pretty cool feature. Now, if we are in ISO 100, you saw that, let's push the button again. Four minutes is the end of story. And as I said in my last video, I said two minutes. So apologies for that, it's four minutes. And let's now have a look what the M10R is doing here. So let's, switch the camera on and let's go here to B. Here we have B, it's right to auto 
and let's push the button. And now here, we can go actually up not only to four minutes, but to six minutes, eight minutes, 12 minutes, 16 minutes. And that's pretty cool. So we have much more optionality here on the way we can take long exposures. Now, typically in the Leica universe, cameras have constraints depending on ISO. So let's go away from this. Let's push up the exposure dial. Let's go, for example, to an ISO of 800 here. Let's do the same game again. So I'm here in B. Let's push the button. And now you see this is restricted. We can no longer go up to four minutes. So we get stuck at a maximum of 60 seconds. Let's see what happens on the Leica M10R. So we do the same exercise. We go up here to an ISO value of 800. We push the button. And then we can go up to four minutes. So we had now on the M10P, let's put them side by side. So on the M10P, you're restricted to 60 seconds at an ISO of 800. On the M10R, you can go up to four minutes, and that's pretty cool. In particular, if you are one of those photographers who love to take long exposures, like me, and in particular in astrophotography, that's pretty cool. Let's go for a typical ISO setting for astrophotography. I would say this is 1600 or 3200 maybe. Let's push that button again. And then you see on the M10P, you are restricted to 16 seconds. Whereas on the M10R, that's 3200 now on the ISO setting. You can go up to 60 seconds. And that is plenty of space if you look at the two now. So 16 seconds versus 60, so six zero seconds on the M10R. And that's plenty of headroom because if you go for a night sky shooting with an ISO of 3200, you still have 60 seconds of exposure time as your maximum, which is plenty of time because at 20, 25 seconds, given this is a full frame sensor and you have a 35 millimeter lens here, the stars will start to line and will become little dashes. And you cannot go beyond, let's say, 30 seconds anyway, if you want to shoot the night sky with that camera, with that lens. So 60 seconds is plenty of headroom. So this camera finally is perfectly suitable for astrophotography. I'm not saying that you cannot do the same with the M10P and depending on how good the night sky is visible, 16 seconds on an ISO of 3200 might still be enough, but it might also become a challenge depending on the environment, the light pollution and the situation in which you are shooting. So these are the two differences we have between the Leica M10R and the Leica M10P. It's the sensor resolution and it is the way you can take long exposures with respect to, you know, predetermined ISO values. And uh, here the Leica M10R clearly is way of superior to the M10P. Having said that, the M10P is a fantastic camera and we'll see in a moment when we go for the test shooting with a couple of images that the Leica M10P is not ready for being retired. I think the M10P is still a fantastic camera. And if you don't need that extra resolution, if you don't need that extra headroom on exposure time, you are still very well advised with an M10P. So if you have an M10P, you don't have to rush into a fire sale of your M10P and rush into an M10R. For me, because I typically also do large prints, the M10R clearly is the superior choice. And since this is a newly designed sensor, you can also bet that Leica incorporated a lot of new technology into the design of that sensor. And that's probably also why this camera is enabled to take longer exposures given certain ISO values because longer exposures typically mean some heat development on the sensor. And that sensor seems to deal with that much better than what we had on the M10P. In order to test the resolution and compare between the M10P and the M10R, I wanted to drive outside of Zurich to a location I visit from time to time, but I was overlooking the weather and I come to that in a moment.
So it is a beautiful round view what I'm showing here with my iPhone video. But what I overlooked is that the last days we had a change between rain and sun and it was super humid and therefore the atmosphere and the air was super hazy and you could actually not look that far and get a clean picture. So instead of photographing towards the far horizon, towards Zurich, across the lake I decided to go for that, let's say, constellation of little farmhouses down there to have some nearby target or subject where I could shoot at and compare the different resolutions on the Leica M10R and the Leica M10P. Not what I wanted, but better than having done the trip just for nothing. Of course I tried to shoot along the lake towards Zurich, but the atmosphere was so hazy that the images were not usable, so I did stick to these farmhouses, which I'm going to show in a moment. So I'm now here in Capture One with the two images. On the left hand side we have the M10P. If we look into the metadata here we find the 24 megapixel resolution which is always close to 6000 times 4000 pixels, give or take. You see it's a digital negative. You also see the time when I was doing the shooting. It was 17 minutes past 8 pm. And you see the lens here, Summicron M uh, 1 to 2, 35 millimeters and so on and so on. You see my shooting parameters were an ISO of 100 and 1 over 60 seconds and the aperture is misleading here because the Leica M lenses have 6-bit optical coding so it recognizes the lens but there is not really information electronically carried over from the lens to the body so the camera body typically does a best guess estimate here which is f4.8. I was actually shooting with f8 in order to get a wide depth of field. Looking at the M10R, here we have the higher resolution which is the 40 megapixels, again a digital negative, so raw file, same time of the shooting of course, and uh, same parameters ISO 100, 1 over 60 seconds, again the aperture was guessed to be 4.8 but it's actually in f8 in order to get this wide depth of field. And that's basically what we have here on these two images. So the two raw files have basically not tweaked in post-processing with two exceptions. I had to adjust a little bit the highlights and the shadows to make these images looking exactly the same. And the reason for that is simple. If people take over shooting parameters from a different camera, they sometimes think this will give them the same exposure as what they saw on display, but that's never the case because every sensor is individually calibrated and clearly on the M10R we have a completely newly developed sensor which is different to the 24 megapixel sensor on the M10P. So let's now look into these two images here and let's magnify by 100% which is a one-on-one -on -one representation of the resolution we have on the individual sensors. So on the M10P this looks like this and on the M10R we have it like this. Both are very crisp, very sharp and of course here if you go to 100% you get a slightly bigger image of the 100% crop than what you have here based on the higher resolution. But if you compare the two it's not really dramatic what difference you see here. And uh, of course if you go from 24 to 40 megapixels is a different jump in let's say the resolution and the number of pixels in X and Y direction than if you would go like I sometimes showed on my channel from a 40 or 47 megapixels to 150 native megapixel resolution sensor like we have it for instance on the Phase 1 IQ4. And by the way on the Leica SL2 you now have this multi-shot feature which gives you 187 megapixels raw files and I tested it already it works very well I didn't find any artifacts so far all good with that new option. By the way, tomorrow I'm going to post a new video where I compare the Leica SL2 with its 187 megapixel multi-shot feature with the Phase 1 IQ4 which has a native resolution of 150 megapixels. So let's move a little bit around in that image here and you see all the details are nicely captured by the M10P. And there is something magic about these Leica M-series cameras and I don't think there is a true theory around it but I sometimes call this deep pixels quote unquote and deep pixels means that a 24 megapixel resolution on these Leica M rangefinder cameras just looks better more crisp and more deep than what you get on a normal sensor. I cannot prove it it's just a hypothesis and it's the way I see these images. Now if we 
Look around here on the M10R, we have the same, a little bigger. And you see here a lot of details, it's very crisp, it's very sharp. Maybe we should go up to 200% on the M10R and then we get even more details here. So uh, this looks actually very good. If we look into that, let's do the same on the M10P. So let's go up to 200%. And also here we get a lot of details. The images look fine. And uh, I think if I want to stop the video here, my conclusion basically is the following. And clearly there needs to be more testing on the M10R also in comparison with the M10P. In particular, when we come to long exposures, which is one of my specialty in photography. But the conclusion is simple. If you don't need that extra resolution between 24 and 40 megapixels because you go for very large prints, then actually with the M10P, as I mentioned before, you are still very well advised. And uh, I think that's remarkable because 24 to 40 sounds like a huge jump, but in fact, as you see here in terms of size, is not a big jump. And the 40 megapixels just give you some extra resolution you can use in prints without getting pixel artifacts. And that's basically my first conclusion from having these cameras side by side. Don't forget the second difference if you are a long exposure shooter, then the M10R of course gives you much more optionality as I showed in the first part of the video. If you liked that video, do not forget to drop me your thumbs up. Thanks for watching, stay safe and healthy and peace out.